So we're here, Human Coffee version 2.0. It's going to be bigger and better than we started. I'm so excited because Human Coffee is the study of the amazingness of humans. And so we'll talk about love and loss, celebration, delight, tragedy, trauma, everything and anything in between. I wanna be able to bring people and bring topics to you as a viewer and a, and a listener in order for you to understand humanity better, in order for you to walk in this world better as the human that you are. So without further ado, here we go. Today, I sit down with Stefan Vandenkoy. 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 <sighs> I'm sorry, Stefan. I got your name wrong in the interview and I apologize. So hopefully you'll forgive me, but this conversation we had was amazing so I hope you'll enjoy what he has to say and to learn a little bit about him and a little bit about the things that he's gone through in life and you know I'm sure he'll bring a smile to your face because he definitely brought a smile to mine hello my name is Rebecca Lee Perry we are on human coffee um i'm here with the wonderful Stefan Vanderkoy did i say it correctly so close Van oh. Koy. Van Den Van Den there's, like, there's like a thousand vanders you're chilling like you, you know how many like times i have tried to, to <laughs> i i practiced so long for this i still got it wrong um i apologize first question of course that i'm going to ask before we even start um what are your pronouns uh he they it you know i'm i'm pretty i'm pretty fluid at this point i'm not I'm not nailed down anything. Awesome. Awesome. So, okay. So a couple of things about Mr. Stefan. He has 369,000 followers on TikTok. Um, you are a writer, poet, actor, educator, podcaster, feminist, oh, anti-racist, anti-misogynist, anti-homophobic. Um, and you have your own podcast as well. Yes. Am I right? Uh, uh, kind of. That podcast got put on. I'm, I'm catching up to that world where you made me sound so much cooler that I need that. <laughs> I need that like on my mirror. Let me, you know, hey, I feel like shit. Be like, I remember what Rebecca said about you. You're all these things. <laughs> uh, that podcast got axed, so the Good Morrow podcast. And then I'm I'm trying to develop my own podcast, but I'm not entirely sure what I want to do just yet. So that's a asterisk. Okay, we'll put an asterisk on it. That's why I have the that's why I have the fancy microphone. So I mean, uh -huh. you know, the, the, the materials are here. Hey, it's just waiting. It's just waiting. So. You know, I'm so excited to have you on the show. One of the reasons why I contacted you is because I actually, um, I don't know which one it was because I've seen so many of your TikToks. I think I've seen every single one. I'm not weird. That's I so just impressive. love your That's content. So impressive. Um, I, one of the ones that got me like interested in you and your content was um, you had talked about how, um, you, you know, it's not just about you know, what women are saying, but it's also about what men are saying about women that are important. Mm -hmm. um, and so um, that was one of the things that I was like, let me just listen to this guy. And like, you're not just, you know, an educator, but you're extremely hilarious. You're extremely um, uh, intelligent, um, for lack of a better word. But um, what I love about your content is that you're willing to say things a lot of people are thinking, but are not willing to say. Mm. So um, that was one of the reasons why I contacted you and, and wanted you to bring you on the show. So, you know, um, for you, is TikTok something that you were planning on doing? It seems like it's all very orchestrated very well. Like when I went through your thing, it's like you know exactly how many to do about a particular subject. You move on to a different one very quickly. Um, for you, um, is it something that you just like literally have a book and you're just like, okay, I'm going to do this for a couple of days and then this? Because it seems like a transition so quickly that yeah. um, it's very smooth and organic. Yeah. Well, yeah, I think the organicness, the or the organicness that's yeah, a word keep going that. thank you thank you <laughs> i think the organicness of it all comes from the fact that i come onto the app and i'll see a video and i'll get inspired by that video like from one of my favorite things about tiktok is somebody will talk about something and i'll think oh i haven't talked about that in that way can i talk about it in a different way that highlights it in my own way mm -hmm. uh there's some guy right now on tiktok that's you know finally getting canceled because he's been stealing content from other creators and you know you hear about those things all the time and so I'm very mindful that if I do see something that I that I think is really well done, uh, if I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it in a way that either 100% points back to that person or is very different but shares themes. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's probably why it becomes so organic is because I, I realize I have a, 
a unique way of presenting things. And if I can't do it uniquely, then I'll just duet it or I'll just stitch it and go, go watch that one. Mm -hmm. uh, which is one thing I love about the app. Yeah. And so are you, um, cause I, I've gone through what I was doing research to prep for the, for the, um, for the conversation. Um, I've looked at all of your spoken word videos. I've looked at, um, a lot of your, um, other work on Instagram and, you know, I, I don't understand you now. I'll be honest with you. I tried so hard, but I have no <laughs> idea what it is. Um, I, I tried so hard. I, I, I'm not joking. I was on there for an hour and a half last night. I was like, Amazing. I've got to figure out what this is so I can talk to him about it. I have no idea what it is. It seems like a streaming service. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Oh, the, the, the you, the you now thing. Yeah. Yeah. That was, that's a very frustrating story because they, they reached out to me because of my followers on TikTok, and the way that the streaming service works is you go live, you engage with people who are on live and they, you know, you get paid based on your engagement and yeah, and people make some good money on those sites. Um, not for me, not my forte. I find going live without like, I'm a theater kid. Like I find going live without a plan or like even a structure. I, I lose it. Like I can't, um, I don't, I don't respond very well. Plus, uh, going live on that platform is a little dangerous because you can bring people onto your lives with you which is a cool which is a really cool concept until you get like an asshole or until you get like somebody who's trying to get a rise out of you like the last thing you want to do is like i brought this kid on one time and he was like i want to be famous on tiktok and he was like 12 oh and i, I was like oh what do you want to be famous for like trying to engage them and he's like you know i just want to like be famous like you for making videos and i was like well hey man like i wouldn't consider myself famous popular for sure on like the hierarchy of the internet yeah. but not famous and so like shit like that like i was like okay this isn't this isn't for me so <laughs> i have kind of taken a step back from that to focus on, on more uh on writing and and what i can and being a little more aggressive with my uh, tiktok stuff mm. so what so when you're looking for you know information about what to talk about where do you get most of your inspiration from? Obviously, everyone gets it from daily life or whatever, but yours, yeah. your content definitely goes deeper than that. It's very thoughtful. It's very engaging. It talks about things like even as a woman and a woman of color, you talked about you talk about a lot of stuff that I'm just like I thought I only felt those things. Mm. Like I I thought that I was like like the crazy one in the corner and everyone else is just going by through life. Um, so where do you get uh, a lot of your your content ideas? Oh, trauma, capital T trauma, all day every day. I mean, I think that everybody processes their trauma differently. And what makes artists special is that we are able to bring out the trauma in a way that is engaging, in a way that is funny or serious or a combination of the two. And that's kind of one of the things I love about, about TikTok is that I only have 60 seconds to try and convey, you know, 27, 28 years of, of this experience or zero experience. So I have to kind of pull from what I think the experience might be like based on what I've read and who I've talked to and other creators I've talked with. Mm -hmm. And I like, I enjoy that challenge because I'm very critical of myself and I'm very critical of my work. And even like the silly ones, like you'll, you can ask my wife, like I'll sit there, shoot for 30 minutes. And if I hate it, I just delete it. And I don't post it. I don't even save it to my drafts. And which she hates because then she's like, just save it to your drafts and then you can come back to it later. And I'm like, I don't want to. <laughs> um, but yeah, the pouty she's a artist, wise woman. But she's very, she's very wise. I actually didn't even hear for the longest time, like for too long. I didn't even know that like, that was an option. Like I was like, how do all these creators just have so many things ready on deck? And she was like, there's a draft feature. I was like, what? So game changer. Uh, but I think I think it did I answer your question. Yes. Yes. Trauma. That was, that was the, <laughs> so, you know, I, obviously I think everyone, no matter your walk of life, you've gone through some type of trauma for you. Yeah. Um, you know, a lot of people are very protective of their, of what they've gone through are very um, willing to project then actually interpret and deal with trauma. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. and I don't think you really project through your content. You definitely do. Um, talk about it in a way where it's connecting with other people who have obviously not gone through what you've gone through. Um, for instance, um, Fuckboy Reform School. There, I love, I love that series. Yes. I hope you continue it forever I, and ever. Oh, I will continue it. <laughs> um, it is one of the best things on TikTok right now, in my opinion. Um, oh. For you, you know, I feel like you're personally talking to me, even though obviously I'm not the demographic you're going after. Do you have a lot of people who 
men who come to you be like, Stefan, you're a genius. Like, thank you so much. You're talking to me. Like, I feel like you're talking straight to me. Or is most, because I'm sure your demographic mostly on TikTok are women. Like, mm-hmm. I assume that. Yeah. Um, do you have people who are actually willing to, to listen? Men that are willing to listen? No. And it's super frustrating because, like, Fuckboy Reform School is a comedic way to try and get fuckboys to go, oh, I. I hadn't thought about it that way. But unfortunately, so many of these guys are so closed off to criticism that as soon as they as soon as their ego is like scratched, they just like swipe. And that's kind of the downside of being a, a content creator is that people have the freedom to just kind of like be like, yeah, not for me, even if it really, really is for them. So with Five Boy Reform School, what I am attempting to do is like, OK, fine, if I can't. If I can't reach literally who this is for, then maybe the people who are affected by it can learn something from it as well. And we can all have a good time. Mm-hmm. That's kind of the direction. Because I'm actually, I'm writing a book as well. Uh, yes. Uh, the, the Fuckboy Cheat Sheet. Um, oh, that's amazing. <laughs> yes. And so that's going to be, that's fun. I'm, I'm in the process of trying to get that picked up, which is a whole different beast in itself. But yeah, that's, uh, that's that. So, okay. So another which I don't know if you consider it a series or not within your work. Um, you do have a lot of times where you'll have conversations with people who are leaving comments on your, your work and you have literal conversations with them. Some of these people who are saying the most ignoramus things I've ever heard, yeah. but yet you have a really a wonderful rebuttal um, without being angry or screaming or cursing them out. Um, and it, it makes me wonder, do you feel like those people are actually just doing it to get, clout and to get a rise out of you and all that kind of stuff or do you actually feel like they're, they're having conversations with you um sometimes i sometimes i really do think that they are interested and that they want to learn and they want to be like you know i'm putting this comment here to see like what the fuck you're gonna say uh but nine times out of ten it's just a troll but mm. the thing about trolls is that you like there are trolls that you should ignore because they're dangerous and if you give them a platform that's honestly just like adding gasoline to a fire and there are trolls who leave comments that actually are a good opportunity to educate people who are not trolls um which is like kind of using their own game against them Mm -hmm. like when somebody comments like just like the n-word you just delete that and you block it and you filter it out because there's nothing constructive there but if somebody comments something like women have zero value and this is why you could be like oh well let's look at how we think about value like you know that that's an opportunity to not only rebut this person but hopefully make somebody else feel a little safer in the process mm-hmm. okay so tell me i i and this is a subject that if you don't want to talk about it we don't have to um but it's definitely something that touch home for me because I have a very similar background is that um, I grew up in a Christian home and with many different points in life where just like it made me question a lot of things just because um, I want to do what's right morally but a lot of these things that are being said by people that surround me and even stuff in the bible and I'm just like a lot of times I, I question a lot of stuff and so um, I've seen a couple of your your TikToks where you talk about your transition from I mean I particularly one video I remember I think you're in your kitchen if I remember I'm I'm I remember the visual part of it I think you're in your kitchen talking about your process of where you were to where you are currently during that mm. video yeah. um, and what ma- I, I, my question is is what made you like you had said you'd question a lot of things throughout life in regards to your walk and um, by the time you had finished school at one of the best, you know, Christian colleges in the country, you had made a different decision by the end of that. Yeah. And what, do you have like a, a, a moment where you're just like, okay, that is why I know that something's wrong or that is why I don't no longer believe what I've been taught. Um, or is it something that was a gradual um, transition? It was like a very, very gradual, it was kind of like a horror movie, like a really, have you seen the movie Hereditary? No but I've heard of it. (laughs) So like a good, good horror movie is like 90% build up, 10% payoff. Like the whole movie, you're like, what is going to happen? And the last 20 minutes, you're like sweating. You're like, oh my God, this is the (laughs) fucking craziest shit I've ever seen in my life. And uh, that's kind of what it was like. Like, I think that my entire life, I had always been questioning, you know, is this legit? Like, is this, is this good for me? Or am I just trying to be good for it? And when I was in college, I'll, I mean, like 2016 was such a, 2016 was my 2020. Like people mm-hmm. talk about how shitty 2020 was. That was my 2016. Mm-hmm. And I broke, I had broken up with a, a very serious girlfriend at the time. 
uh, and had like in that process kind of just like crumbled. <laughs> like mm -hmm. she was kind of like my last bit semblance of faith and reasons for faith I was holding on to. And after that, it was like the final card had been pulled out from the from the tower. And I played my life backwards and realized that I kind of had never had a say in what I wanted to believe, even though I was told that it was my choice and I didn't, I, all I needed was, you know, faith and faith was my choice. Looking back, I realized that I was kind of always in a, in a bubble of people who just kind of kept bouncing me back into the middle of what, with, I mean, with good intentions, like nobody did it. I don't think maliciously. It's just mm -hmm. when it's what, you know, it's what, you know, right. and uh, a movie that kind of broke the straw that broke the camel's back was uh, Jesus camp. So oh, I watched, yeah. Have you watched, have you seen that movie? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Do you remember, remember the kid, uh, oh, um, Levi with mm -hmm. the, with the ponytail? Yeah. So that was me as a kid, like straight up. That mm -hmm. was, that was me. Like, and that little girl, like she was reminding me of one of my best friends as a kid. Like, you know, when you're a kid and you're told that knowing the Bible, like the back of your hand before you know your ABCs is the most important thing you can do. Hello, you're gonna fucking do it. And somebody like me, who is a voracious reader, like I could just lock me in a library and give me some coffee, and you know, I mean, I will be emaciated by the time I'm done reading, but I will also <laughs> be so happy and content. Uh, yeah, when the new, segue, segue. When the new Beauty and the Beast came out, you know, let's just ignore the Stockholm syndrome and the uh, the aggressive behavior of the Beast just for a second. Yeah. <laughs> When, like, in the live action, when he opens the library, he's like, oh, I got you a library. I was like, oh, excuse me, in the animated movie, in the animated movie, it's the fucking Oscar award ceremony. We open it up, it gets its own scene. You casual about your library. I was so, I was, I was so pissed. Uh, so there's that, there's that nugget for you. Uh, but then, <laughs> so then, after watching that movie, I had kind of already been, this is going to sound really bad. So don't judge me too hard, but I was like really following what was happening with ISIS mm -hmm. because I was, I was, we were in school at that time. And so like people knew people who were being affected by ISIS presence in the Middle East, wow. like missionaries and friends of families and whatever, you know, professors knew people firsthand who couldn't get a hold of them or yada, yada, yada. So I had a lot of questions and through a lot of research, I saw some really fucked up stuff online. Like I think people forget that the internet isn't just like Facebook, Twitter, and you know, your grandparents arguing, like, there's some dark shit on there. Mm -hmm. And, you know, as somebody whose worldview was supposed to be, hey, there's dark things because it, like, accents the light. I was like, this is really, really dark. I don't see any light in this. So I went to different professors that I respected and professors who I respected nationally. And they had just such shitty answers. And, and I think the day you become an adult is when you stop taking everybody else's answers as the end all be all. Uh, and for Christians, especially, or people of faith, especially, you have to make, you have to make a choice. And that's kind of the beauty of it is you have the choice to go, okay, I'm just going to sit in the in between in the gray of, yeah, I hope this is good, but it doesn't seem like there's any good or what I did and go, no, fuck that. Like, I'm not going to make excuses for this belief system anymore. I'm out. I'm going to, I'm going to find my own. Uh, and that was that was really messy. I mean, I lost lost a few relationships, kept all my core ones. I mean, that was definitely a a good time in my life where I saw who was in my corner. Um, mm -hmm. Most of the people who are, who stayed in my life are still in my life, like all of my closest friends. And what's hilarious is like really all of my most important relationships are Christians. <laughs> like I don't just like I didn't just like cut them out. Um, and you know we we can talk about religion to a certain extent, but, at, but we always reach a point where it's like, look, you know, if we want to keep talking about this, uh, I don't think it's going to go well for us. Like, mm -hmm. can, can we pause here? And they're very respectful. So mm -hmm. that's, that's why they're my friends is because they're respectful. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise. Otherwise. Get the fuck out. God. Um, so, you know, for you now, do you still feel like you're, I mean, what what I, I I love the Christian faith of the basis of what um, should be taught, not necessarily what a lot of people do with how they how they feel like it should be. Um, but what I don't like about it is the ability to translate 
um, what you read into what you personally want. And so, mm -hmm. um, you know, one of the things that I feel like is, is ridiculous to me, which is an issue we're having right now, obviously in our culture is like Christians know everything and everyone else is stupid. Like we have to teach you how to live. Right. Um, and so I have all the answers and you know, nothing. And, um, you know, for you, do you still feel personally still transitioning? Cause in real life as human beings to the day that we take our last breath, like we're always changing, right? We're yeah. always trying to, if you're a good person, trying to find the better version of yourself through every day you yeah. walk. So, um, for you right now, are you still, do you feel, still feel yourself doing that? Or do you feel like you're pretty much grounded um, in your moral system, your belief system, in in where you were maybe since 2016. Well, thankfully, I am not the person that I am or was in, in 2016. Uh, I do. I mean, I would say one of my greatest values is truth, like actual the the truth of the issue. And probably what what makes me so, I guess the word is like, I guess fired up is that that people are getting away with abuse because it's because it's acceptable. And I think looking back, um, I'm definitely not, I definitely haven't like shed every single Christian quote unquote value. I've just realized that those aren't uniquely Christian. They are, there are other cultures that have done it better and who do it better. And that's really wonderful because it's not, it doesn't like pigeonhole you in one idea. Mm -hmm. um, and I do. I mean, I really do. Tr I mean, I was just talking to my sister yesterday. And she was like, what are you reading for fun? And I was <laughs> like, well, for, for, for fun, I, I just read, you know, nonfiction books. I'm a really boring, basic white guy. Like, it's just I like my I like my nonfiction. <laughs> and uh, I'm like, when I hit 60, I'll switch to historical fiction like it is what it is. Uh, but <laughs> uh, but there's so there's just so much. Like there's no well, there really is no well deeper than yourself. And so when you think you've hit the bottom, you just got to keep digging. And that's something that I really have enjoyed since leaving the faith is that in the faith, whatever the fuck that even means, by the way, like all of these terms that are both blanket and individual blanket and societal that churches and faith groups use, it was really freeing to go, no, 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 no. I, I, I'm in charge of what me means, what makes me, me. And yeah, I like that. I mean, I do that. I'm, I'm doing that now. I, I don't think I'm, I don't, I hope I will never stop doing that. Mm -hmm. And um, before 2016, because one of the things that I've, I've learned as I didn't go to the most prestigious Christian school, but I did grow up um, in that world. And one of the things that, that I've realized is that, you know, once you've, um, and this is might be this might be something just you and I understand, and not the people who are listening to this understands. But you know, there's um, baby food preaching, and then there's meat and potatoes. And then people think that once they hit the meat and potatoes, um, there's nothing better than that, right? There's you can't you can't get any better than that. Yeah. Um, during your time, you know, till 2016, did you feel like you were at the peak of understanding your meat and potatoes, or like 2016 was when you're like, there are no meat and potatoes. It's a it's a buffet. Yeah, well, I think I think in two thousand by the time I hit two thousand sixteen, I was like, okay, I could either go get my like masters in theology, or like just mm -hmm. I I could I could take the road of okay, I'm gonna go argue for this forever essentially, mm -hmm. uh, or I could argue for something else entirely, and I didn't know what that was gonna look like, and I think that was one of the few times in my life where I did take a, a literal leap of faith and mm -hmm. not know where I was gonna land and. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I think I'm still falling. That's kind of what it feels like, but you know, it's, it's chill. It is, it is what it is. Um, I don't think, I think, I think even the question of like, is it baby food? Is it, is it meat and potatoes? Is like something that you and something has been ingrained in you and I, is that like, no matter where we get at the table, we're never going to be at the same place that Jesus or God is in regards to understanding the gospel. And like an even more like a toxic version of that would be one of it be to where the pastor or the deacon is or the right. biblical scholar, like, like I have a buddy and we agree on everything except for where the church, the church, again, whatever the fuck that means, should go in the future. And he's a reformist. Like he's a, he's a very, you would love him. He's a fantastic human who believes that the church can be saved. And I disagree. I think it, mm. it needs to go away. Mm -hmm. And I know that's not possible, but you know, it is, that is what it is. Yeah. And, uh, 
but he's somebody who has he took the other route like he pursued we have the same values when it comes to human life lgbtqia plus uh people of color indigenous people women everything like the whole spectrum mm -hmm. but his difference is that he's kept his biblical lens and he's mm -hmm. and he's grown within that fence whereas mm -hmm. i said nah and i and i left um and i think that what's really painful is that when christians leave we'll just stick we'll just stick to christians when christians leave their christian circles that that guttural feeling of like i just don't know enough or I, i'll never know enough or i'll never be enough like sticks with us yeah because that's just what we were told but like with the positive spin like you'll never be enough or you'll never be good enough but but it's okay because jesus loves you mm -hmm. and i'm like well jesus doesn't pay for my gas so this doesn't <laughs> feel as on brand as you'd like it to be yeah. and, and, and using and i and you know what i would love to make a whole film dedicated to the ridiculous like metaphors pastors will use as like a back i had a pastor once use the movie over the hedge to preach a five week like sermon on the hedge of protection oh my god <laughs> oh yeah oh yeah good shit good oh, shit no. you know so it's like it's uh, he said it's good. It's good material. They're endless. You know, they wonder where my material comes from. It's just I got there's a, a Rolodex just going oh, all the time. Man. Yeah. I'm not joking. Um. Well, the thing is, is that I I look at as look at this whole the way Chris, Christians are. I mean, there's so many degrees of it, right? There's the the Bible thumping Christians that are just like, unless you're white and blonde, you're gonna go to hell. There and there's the degree of Christians are like. If you're gay, you're going to hell. Then there's a degree of Christians that are like, you know, um, love everybody. What is it? Uh, hate the sin and love the sinner or something yeah, like that. Yeah, you know, all that. Yeah. At the end of the day, which I, I I think what what you're trying to say within the, the underlying work of your content and everything is that the problem with Christianity is that we're putting too much of – if you're looking at the Bible and doing it correctly, you understand that people are flawed. I don't care if you were born with no trauma in your life or if you were born with the worst family surrounding or no family or whatever. Like all of us have some type of flaws in us and that we interject those things into religion, whether it's Christian, whether it's Buddhism, whether it's Hinduism, and then we take it as our own, put it in ourselves, and then we state that as truth. And I think mm -hmm. that that truth can become um, changed and, and molded into certain things and passed down, passed down, passed down. By the time it gets down to the 50th person – it's no longer what the original truth was. And um, that's what, it, it's just the human race is failing us so badly um, on so many different levels that um, we are now saying, oh, well, the truth is in, you know, Christianity when we're in the sense that Jesus wasn't even a Christian. But don't tell anybody that. Like, <laughs> right. you can't say right. that stuff. So, um, right. but yeah, it's it's um, it's very interesting to see, like, especially with everything with, like, Little Nas and, like, <laughs> that song is playing at my wedding i'm so excited <laughs> i i love it um it's just it's so funny and christians just don't get it they just don't they don't get it so um i know i'm spiraling out of control as far as this interview goes but it was definitely something i wanted to talk to you about just because i oh, think it's no very worries. important well no um, worries and, and before i forget like my biggest qualm with christianity is that the whole argument based is is based on the fact that the God with unlimited power, knowledge, and ex like experience, the best he could do was create a man that looked like everybody else. <laughs> like that's 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 his best work. Like what? That's, like that's like saying M Night Shyamalan's best work is Avatar: Last Airbender, and saying it's a masterpiece. <laughs> no. like, it just doesn't fit. You're like, I don't, I don't follow. <laughs> yeah <laughs> but yeah i think um you know it's definitely something that i hope that you know people can continue to and it's just like everything else with with racism and and you know against the gay community it's like everyone's trying to pick sides instead of having a conversation like it's not that i mean why does everyone have to get their get their selves all worked up when it's just like, can we just sit down and talk? It's, you don't have to all, and everybody doesn't have to always agree. That's not, yeah. that's how life is, you know? So anyways, um, so let's go back to you. 
<laughs> and <laughs> get back to, to you because that's why you're here. Um, for you, you know, what is the biggest takeaway that you want people to to get through your content? Not just on TikTok, obviously. You, you have books. You have a book that you're writing, um, you know, and you, you do spoken word and all that kind of stuff. Like, what is the main, I guess, the mantra of Stefan that you want people to take away from your content and, and the stuff that you put out as a creative? Well, fuck, that's a good question. Uh, give me just a <laughs> take a, just a moment. Yeah, let me take a second for that existential moment. Uh, well, I guess, I guess what I'm trying to communicate is, you know, hey, like, look at me, like I, I'm super fucked up, and yet there's a community for that. Like there are people for you, and also, hey, look at me, like it's not that hard to find like a baseline humanity. You know, if it doesn't meet this basic requirement, then I'm sorry, you're, you're, you're not recognizing the full humanity of the person you claim to understand mm -hmm. and love. Something that Christianity really never served for me. Mm -hmm. um, even though it promised a baseline. It, that is it so really, sad. Yeah, and it really couldn't. And you know, I, I, I think what I want people to take away from my content is that there are certain topics that are very, very gray and you should be able to sit in the gray. And there are certain topics where there is no gray. Um, the, the situation might be gray, but the understanding of it isn't. And that's that's like the, like the not all men argument right now where it's like, not all men. Okay, that's really not the point of the argument. You're, you're right, it is not all men because if it was all men, well, there probably wouldn't be any women in the world. They'd all be dead. You know, that's just mm -hmm. how that works. Yeah. But, but all men are affected and while that is a gray look, like even now we're talking, we're lost in the gray, not the fucking point. Mm -hmm. The point is that half the population feels unsafe with the other half of the population. That's the point. The point is that there's half the population that has a hypervigilance, like a constant anxiety mm -hmm. um, that we, the other half is not acknowledging. So I think I hope people see my content and go, huh, I hadn't thought about it that way, is my mm -hmm. underlying thesis. Mm -hmm. And so I know you don't have, you don't have to give me your, your 10 year plan, obviously, but, um, you know, for you, you know, going forward, are you looking at your work as a progression of your career as far as I'm, you know, in five years, I want to be, you know, a chef or in 10 years, I want to be an actor in Hollywood or, or whatever. Yeah. Um, for you, is this more of a, a smaller thing to a bigger scheme that you have for, you know, five years down the road where you want to be? Or is this like, I'm really trying to get, you know, followers to build up for, I don't know, whatever career you're trying to go after? Like, what is your, in, in a sense, you don't have to tell me everything, obviously, but abstract, uh, what is your game plan toward what you're going for? I always think of the Aaron Burr quote from Hamilton, where he's like, um, what does he say? He's like, nobody, uh, oh, uh, what was it? God damn it. I'm so disappointed in myself. <laughs> it's because I put you on the spot. Stephanie. You did. You did. Yeah. I, I didn't have, I'm not, I haven't had my Hamilton Rolodex ready. Also, <laughs> my, the second Rolodex reference I've made in this interview, and I don't even own a Rolodex. <laughs> I know. Uh, some people are going to listen to this and be like, what is a Rolodex? <laughs> What's a Rolodex? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it's like your phone, but much more flammable. <laughs> uh, well, let's see. That's, I'm so glad you asked that because... I think I thought of Aaron Burr because like I well, like the politician in me is like, keep it a secret. Don't let people know what your plan is. But I was like, no, my plan's like very great. And I hope it comes to fruition. Basically, I, I'm, a, I'm a creative person who has not one specific interest. And that has a lot of benefits. It means I can find joy in a lot of different things. The downside is that in order to get somewhere, you have to focus on one thing at a time. So the way I see it is TikTok is like my... Um, my like little free dopamine hits, right? Like if I can make content that gets people to think, that makes them laugh, that brings them value. Like I love seeing people's comments that, you know, oh, I hadn't thought about this or I'm so glad that somebody else said it or like I didn't even know men had this thought. Like that was that, those are my favorites is when it's like, didn't know a man could think this. And I was like, damn, <laughs> I, mean, I appreciate it, but shit, low bar. Uh, bar's low, my friend, the bar's bar very low. It's on the so, ground. It's underground right now. And, and love to talk <laughs> about lifting bars, except for the only one that matters. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, but long term, you know, I love 
I love the theater. I love movies. You know, I as you saw, I love spoken word. So 10 years down the road, if I can even speak so, if I'm so lucky to live another 10 years, I want my own production company. I want to be in charge of creative decisions. The short-term game is just bettering my craft, getting better at writing, getting better at making those content videos. Um, I mean, selfishly, I hope my book does incredibly well because then I can, I mean, financially being financially freed up from like student loans mm -hmm. and like even like little debts um, would would be a huge, huge stress relief. I mean, there is a reason it's called the starving artist. I mean, you you you, have, you suck for a long time wow. and you're poor and you're poor for a long time and maybe you make it. But the ones who maybe make it are the ones that are are going in a specific direction mm -hmm. and. That is definitely the direction I see myself going is uh, using art to, I mean, simply put, I just want to use art to like monetize. I want to monetize art to help people who can't help themselves, essentially. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, like, for example, like a very simple problem in the United States is that abortions are not easily accessible in all the other states. I love living in California. California is the best mm -hmm. you know, and the worst, you know, wait, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> uh, can't be best at everything. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, definitely not best at everything. Uh, but I, you know, it would be so simple to have just like a private organization or a public organization to pay for women to just fly to California because mm. there's a clinic like every seven, like a seven minute radius is kind of the average here for clinics that offer oh, wow. abortion or some sort of like care in that regard. And someplace like Pennsylvania or Arkansas, you know, there's one, maybe two clinics. And you got to jump through 30 hoops to even maybe get what you want. Uh, so, I mean, if I was Jeff Bezos, I would be fucking, I'd be fucking flying people every, I'd be just be like, yo, come on, let's go. We're going to call it the ABB Air own Charter. Yeah. <laughs> Look, what's that? Oh, that's the abortion jet. It's amazing. <laughs> like, <laughs> um, totally, totally green. Totally green. Totally green. All uh, electric. Yeah. Yeah. Because I think like there's always this there's always this tension with artists where it's like I don't want my work to be tainted by money and it's like no please taint my work yeah taint it give me all the money because my art is it's gonna stand on its own and then exactly. we get to all work together because I'm sure you've noticed on TikTok like one of the best things about TikTok is the collaborations like people who can do collaborative stuff or respond to other creators um, I've made a, a few friends T Blizzy uh, Tyra she's fantastic like she's reached out. Um, a couple other people. Shoot, I can't think of their names. They're gonna listen to this and be like, "He doesn't like me." That's not true. I just don't remember. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I think that I heard this quote recently where it was like, "Psycho the field of psychology and like mental health is starting to get some buzz, but the true original psychologists and therapists were writers always and artists. Mm -hmm. They." took what were like what was going on inside of them and they shared it like you can go read a novel from a hundred years ago and it'll have the same psychological principles it'll speak to you in the same way as if you sat in a, a therapy session for two weeks and i think that's a really big responsibility and it also different tangent it's also what really bothers me about youtube content creators because it's less about substance and and more about i don't know like ah and ooh like the david dobrik situation right now was a great example oh my gosh like, I, like hang on just to be clear we're surprised <laughs> why do we keep getting surprised i don't under like this is what cracks me up because they're like oh, can can you believe it yeah yeah <laughs> like, <it's> like, <laughs> like, like imagine if ashton kutcher just remained a douchebag like that's just what is like that's just who we keep kind of propping up and it's and I think I think what's hard is like it's really easy to become envious and be like oh but like they have such a great following and like look at all these brand deals and like they're influencers and it's like that is being an influencer is a great responsibility because you are you're influencing but you also you're speaking you're being a mouthpiece for something that you believe is important Perfect. so it's disappointing when there are influencers who use that in a way that's kind of like i don't know old school marlon brando you know like where it's like star power so we're not going to question the morality of what you're doing um and and the frustrating part is like when you look at somebody like um 
trying to think of like a not so controversial artistic example, but I don't think there is one. Like, uh... um... <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we're both like uh... either speak to the fences or just like you know not say anything. <laughs> but I, they all are big names. Uh, well, fine, um... we'll go. We'll go with Michael Jackson because his are technically still allegations. He never. Okay. He was never. He was never convicted. He was never charged. But if you, but there is enough evidence to suggest that some very questionable things happened while he was alive. Now, the thing is that Michael Jackson happened to also create content that was incredibly influential to a lot of people. And now we have the choice to go, okay, do I acknowledge this every time I listen to this or do I cut it out entirely? But with content creators, I'm sorry, like once I cut out the content, what art am I left with? Right. Like, where is the where's the value? Where's the imprint that is important to me? Mm-hmm. Uh, and not to say that all content creators do this because that's a, that's a gross overstatement. There are content creators who like speak on bulimia or speak on uh, like human trafficking or fast fashion. Mm-hmm. Um, and while those maybe aren't creating art, they are definitely leaving an impact because they're influencing the way people think about these really important topics. Mm-hmm. Uh, how did we get on this topic? How did we get we- here? <laughs> We were talking about, you know, what's your 10 year plan? Like, you know, after <laughs> you. <laughs> yeah, you can see I'm really, really focused, very focused. Um, you said eventually you want to uh, run your own production company, yeah. you know, create work that um, shows people who you are, but also sees you as flawed so they can see the, the flaws in themselves and see that we're all human. Um, but for you, you know, and even I, cause now I can't forget about David Dobrik. Um, what is your take on content creators who, cause I believe that whether you have zero followers or you have 10 million followers and you have all the money and stuff, money only exposes who you really are when you had zero followers. Right. Like that's, <laughs> yeah, that's like, that's just, I mean, I'm, I'm not saying David Dobrik is just a trash person. From the original time, maybe he, I mean, people transition all the time. We, we, we talked about this at the beginning part of the, the conversation. However, um, what is your take on, you know, content creators that are getting canceled for stuff that they say or do or whatever? Only JS, I'm looking at you. Um, and, you know, stuff that they say and then apologizing, but not really, like, do you think there's a way to come back from that? Like, if they truly did mean it yeah because I, cause I think if they meant it the way to come back from it is to one make sure it doesn't happen again and two to put some action into it like apologies without apologies without action is just abuse mm-hmm. so like if there's a creator I, I think snl did like a didn't they do like a sketch on, on david dobrek's a, a, a apology like it, it is i mean the fact that it's become a trope is a little disheartening because that means that they're we're just, we've just kind of like expected that these content creators are going to say something racist or they're going to respond to something racist they said earlier like honestly i my wife and i have had this conversation multiple times like i've done enough shitty things i'm sure i've written enough shitty things when i was in high school to where at some point some troll is going to go through and be like you said this thing and when that happens there is an awesome opportunity to not only be humbled and apologize, but to then use that as a propelling force forward. Like, mm-hmm. let's take um, Kevin Hart's an excellent example because he responded with so much defensiveness, and defensiveness defeats an apology. Like, if 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 you're defensive, then you're you're missing the point of what needs to be an apology. Um, shoot, where's my where's this book? Where where are you? Ah, ha, 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 ha. <laughs> Uh, this book, The Dance of Anger by Harriet Lerner, is so important. And it's not only about apologizing, it's about how we experience uh, anger. It's specifically how women experience anger, but it spoke to me like nobody's business, so I don't know what that says. Um, and what's frustrating is like Kevin Hart said something a long time ago, like all of it, he had like a lot of gay jokes when he was a comic. I laughed at them, I thought they were hilarious. I was 17 16 20 you know i i i would still laugh at them now because they are objectively funny but i don't go and watch him i don't go and promote his i don't go and promote that content i don't share that stuff with my followers not because i'm trying to keep it a secret just because that's that doesn't reflect what i want there are new comics coming out there are female comics coming out who are just as funny if not a lot of the times way funnier Mm -hmm. and 
Kevin Hart had an opportunity to go, you know what? You're right. I fucked up. And I thought I know those jokes were hilarious for me in my context. But hey, you know what I got now? I built an empire off of that. So you know what? Let me let me do this for you. Let me apologize and get this. I'm also going to donate like ten million dollars to like this anti-bullying, you know, for for gay kids in my in my community. Let's see if we can drop the number of teen suicides in my community down. Mm -hmm. But he, he didn't do that. You know, he got defensive. He he retaliated. It was a PR nightmare, mm -hmm. and it, it's just a bummer because you're like. You can't delete history, bro. It happened. But yeah. you're now in a position of power where you could actually, you, when you were a kid and you said that, you couldn't do anything about it other than just apologize. Mm -hmm. You have the power now to apologize and make a huge difference. Mm -hmm. So I think my take on that is that, like I said originally, apologizing without action is abuse. Mm -hmm. And these creators who have huge platforms, when they don't apologize, they miss a huge opportunity to show people that hey, you know, being apologetic is, is important and and being genuine with your apology is important. And then taking steps to make sure the thing you're apologizing for doesn't happen again is very important. Right. Um, but when it becomes this trope, like, hey, man, just you know, really want to apologize <laughs> for this uh, thing happened. It's like, don't be shocked. Don't be shocked that it happened. You know, like it's like, how are you surprised? You fucking did it. <laughs> um, so, and that's kind of like, that's like my 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 platform is like, hey, like this is. And somebody finally asked me uh, on a comment, and they said, so are you somebody who pays a lot of attention to fuck boys, or will you consider yourself a reformed fuck boy? And I said, mm -hmm. definitely reformed. But I would even. <laughs> But I would even amend that to say definitely reforming because there are still things that pop up all the time where I'm like, well, that was sexist or like, well, that was racist or like, oh, that was homophobic. And it's because, like you said, mm -hmm. it's an everyday journey. Like, I'm not just going to shed off those layers. I haven't lived long enough to where my new experiences of how I see the world outlive the old experiences. Mm -hmm. You know, the hope is that one day I get to a point where those happen less and less and less, almost not at all. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, for now, just being open and being like, no, yeah, no, I was a piece of shit. And uh, I hope to <laughs> help people. I hope to help people not be that. Uh, and here's how. <laughs> Go to tiktok.com slash. Uh, don't be an <laughs> asshole. <laughs> yeah. I hope you're enjoying the podcast. I just wanted to jump in really quickly and say I love Stefan. He's awesome, right? So... One of the main reasons also I'm jumping in is that I'm editing this right now and I'm thinking about all the amazing things that I could have talked to him about and I didn't because I got so enamored with him and I'd love to expand this show. I have so many things that I feel like I could do with this show, with this podcast, and I can only do that if I find support. So if you like this podcast, if you feel like there are some great things that you got out of this podcast, hopefully in the future episodes that we have coming up, um, consider buying me a coffee. Go to buymeacoffee.com forward slash human coffee and donate. If you can't donate, that's fine. But I just wanted to put it out there that I'd love to um, find support in a way that, you know, we can connect with other humans through um, this podcast. You know, I'd love to get a studio and I'd love to, you know, upgrade the equipment and all these different things, but I can't do that without your support. So, there's awesome things that you can do through um, the Buy Me a Coffee website. Um, funnily enough, I don't drink coffee. I actually drink tea. But, <laughs> you know, it goes with the aesthetic, I guess. I guess. You know, um, I love people. And I love connecting with people. I love learning about people. The differences. The... Um, similarities that we all have and that's what I want to do with this podcast so if you are interested in hearing more about it please consider donating and if not that's fine just share it like it whatever you want to do um, but thank you again for anything and all the support <laughs> so let's talk a little bit about your book because I know we're getting off topic because okay. I could talk to you for hours um, and I'm enjoying this as well you are wonderful and I appreciate this Oh, thank you. Um, I wanted to talk about your book because I feel like you do a lot of really, because I listened to the 
I think it was two or three episodes on your podcast. So you do a lot of fiction writing as well. So is this a nonfiction book? It sounds like a nonfiction. And yes. this is something that you're trying to self-publish and everything? No, I'm trying to get it published, published. So I'm in, I'm in, uh, something really cool happened. I was on a live um, for TikTok and a, a book agent reached out to me. Wow. And so we have been, because I was talking about the book and I read, a, I read something from the book and which was a, which at this point was like three drafts ago, which is crazy. Um, and so her and I have been in communication. She's wonderful. I, and I'm hoping that um, she likes this most recent proposal I sent over. Uh, she's been very very gracious and um the book it's a it's basically it's like a non-fiction self-help book but the mm -hmm. the niche the catch is like hey like you know this is coming direct from the horse's mouth here like this is somebody who's not pulling any punches on myself mm -hmm. so that's why i'm speaking so freely about it i'm not saying hey that guy did this i'm saying this guy did this and these were the results and now i have the hindsight to look back and, and scrap Inscrapulate? Discrapulate? What is yes, that that's word? Yes, that's a word. That's oh the, yes, we're going to go with Struggling. that. Thank that's time. Thank you. And we're, in, we're inventing words today. Exactly. Um, going back and basically like investigating, why the fuck did I do that? Or like what enabled me, what gave me the idea that that was okay? And really, though, I mean, if I, you want to just like water my book down to two words, it's entitlement and narcissism. Because... Mm -hmm. Almost all men have a degree. All, everybody has a degree of entitlement and narcissism. But men, especially in America, especially who grew up in religious groups, almost have like an unhealthy balance of the two. Yeah. Um, and so the book is just really trying to... The book starts out with empathy for the fuckboy, which of course nobody likes, but it's an important place to start. So this is why he does... This is why he does what he does. Mm -hmm. And then the second part of the book is... Um, why you might do what you do, like why you react to the fuck boy in this way, you know, like why does he charm you so much? Like there might there might be some not so fun answers you're gonna like about this. And then the last part of it is, you know, where do we go from here? All right, fuck, I read this book. What do I do with this information? Um, and what I'd like to do with the book is I'd like if it is a success, and I'm hoping it is, I'd like it to be a stepping stone for the next book, which I'd like the next book I'd like to write would be about um, incels. Are you familiar with? The incel community, involuntary uh, well, celibates. Yeah, what they I've, call themselves. Yeah, I've heard. I've heard whisperings about it. it's a it's a newer word in culture, but it's like yep. not it's, really talked about. Right, it's the newer word. They've been around for a lot a lot longer than that. Yeah. And the last probably like four school shooters were all self proclaimed incels. Wow, I didn't know that. I don't have a fact for that. I don't have a stat to back that up. So let's just put an asterisk next to that. But there's <laughs> okay. definitely. There's definitely a see how see how easy that was Fox News. You see how easy that was, uh, and CNN. I'm not leaving out anybody. ABC, NBC. Just a quick asterisk at the end of your sentence. That means that everything they talk about has to have an asterisk next to it, though. Literally, I know. Literally, today on Asterisk News, I should start a news station just called Asterisk News. I'll just repeat everything they say with an asterisk. Oh my god, this is brilliant. We've discovered something new here, uh, because. There's like this, it's it's so frustrating because like there's this this male culture that's really good at preying on in like insecurities that males have, like culturally. And did you see my most recent TikTok about Monsters Inc? Like the analogy of yes, back. It. Yes, like that is probably one of the best ways to think about it in the sense of that there are these these groups of men who are saying like look this is the only way we we hold on to our power is through domination and through manipulation and if people don't conform to this belief it's because they don't understand that this is what you're entitled to as a man and that this is what gives you value wow. and no nobody is showing them the other side of the curtain which is like hey man this guy is a snake oil salesman he hates himself more than he likes you guys and he's just feeding you that same poison um but wow. how do you, how do you, you have to, in order to get through to these guys, you have to make like a crazy outlandish claim. Like this is a very crude way to put it, but like you have to be like a porn banner. Like when you like go to a porn site and it says like, this will grow you 10 inches. And you're like, what? Crazy. <laughs> like Click you know, on this. <laughs> this. You know, like it has to be that outlandish where it's like, hey, do you want to get women? 
a hundred percent guarantee come to this seminar but then when they get there it's like all right you're locked in i took all your phones and guess what we're actually just going to talk about you why do you hate yourself <laughs> you know so it's like so it's, you have to it, trick them into coming in to try to get some help we just have to get them in the in the room because right now they think that one they're not allowed like it's not a safe space for them and it's because that they it's because we viewed them as a, it, it's the thing is that it's not a safe space for them like it's it, people are very hostile because the repercussions of that worldview are school shootings are domestic abuse are rape our rape culture like it's every problem socially that is like a sexual crime comes down to this core belief that men are entitled to this power yeah. and you the only way to get the only way to counteract that power is to show a better power which is hilarious it's like that's kind of the christian argument right where it's like the world is this way but 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 god uh <laughs> so i'm just trying to be like be like hey you know like your masculinity is this way you know but this is like way better like don't you want to be able to cry like occasionally like it's pretty fun to like let it out <laughs> um <laughs> It's yeah, pretty so fun was... to cry in your room in the yeah. shower. <laughs> so, so I'm really curious. Um, you know, what does your immediate family think of the work that you do? You know, where you are in life, and and you know the the next steps in your life where you're going. Like, are they supportive of you? Are they outlandishly no? no. Ooh, no, no, no. <laughs> I'm sorry. They are. Um... They are worried for my salvation, which happens to be a conversation we just we just talked about. Because my parents are, they are the frust they are the most frustrating group of Christians because they're very loving people. So they mm -hmm. are like you hate you enjoy hanging out with them. Like they're a really fun time. Um, but as soon as you start talking about values and like belief systems, you quickly mm -hmm. begin feeling unsafe, and mm -hmm. that's that's very frustrating. And so like we had a I had a conversation with my mom. And my dad and I said, hey, you know what? I want you guys to know, like, I value our relationships, but I don't think we can talk about these things anymore. Uh, and here's why. And they're like, well, no. And I was like, okay, well, hold, hold, I was like, hold, hold the fuck on for a second. If, if you, if every time I talk to you, the underlying fear you have is that I'm going to go to hell, kind of hard for us to have a conversation. Mm -hmm. and, and, yeah. You know, like, I'm like, I'm like, that's really intense. Like, no wonder you're so fired up about what I believe and what I think. Like, that's a strong place to be in. Um, they want very badly for me to use my abilities to see the world in the way that they see the world. Um, and I think what's frustrating, I think, well, I have empathy for them because what's frustrating is that when I was younger, like if you, I'm sure you, if you watch my spoken word videos, like there are, there, I think all my spoken word videos are Christian, uh, the ones that are online. Yeah. Some of them are. There's one about misogyny, which was really good that you did. Righteous. It's out there. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and they, I think they saw how impactful those were because they were, and they're disappointed that I didn't just stick with those things. Uh, mm -hmm. The, like stick with my Christian gifts, as, as they would probably call it. Um, mm -hmm. For a while, they thought this was like a phase and that, that I was going to come out of it. And then mm -hmm. now they're kind of to the point where they're like, well, we just hope you come out of whatever this is, that you that you see the light. And what's mm -hmm. frustrating for our generation that my friends and I were talking about is that I asked my parents, I said, you know, you guys pray for me all the time. Have you ever considered that, you know, your prayers have been answered? And... Mm. They were like, well, what do you mean? And I was mm. like, you know, you keep praying for me to see God. Well, what if I have and you haven't? Oh, <laughs> that's a great, great comment. I'm like, because I'm like, I'm like, I don't pray for you. Like, I'm, I'm not over here praying. So, like, I don't know what you're going on. I hope somebody's praying for you, but it ain't me. You know, but <laughs> you're, you're daily actively praying for me. Chances are, if that is, a, if that, if that is true, if the way that the world works is that people pray for people and then things happen, then Chances are something has already happened. You just don't like it. Uh, which, if my mother ever hears this, mom, you know I love you. So let's just like chill the fuck out. Uh, <laughs> Another asterisk on the on the end of that that's one. Capital <laughs> asterisk, bold, underline, <laughs> italics. Uh, well, I think you know, and it go kind of goes back to what we had spoken about earlier in the conversation of it. <sighs> 
we we again as as Christians, I believe that you know we have that lens that we see everything through, and if it's not you know through my lens, then it's wrong. And um, I think that one of the things that I think a lot of Christians forget, and I'm not talking about your family in particular, I'm talking about just Christians in general, um, is that we want um, to judge how everyone's walk should be, whether you are a Christian or not. Um, mm-hmm. And if it doesn't fit through that lens and you're automatically going to burn in hell, you're automatically going to, you know, do those, those things that, you know, are wrong and terrible and, and all those things. So um, at the end of the day, it's between no one else but you and, you know, your maker. So I, I think that it's, it's sad, but at the end of the day, it's like, you know, we all have to like, like you have very graciously, like gone through your walk, questioned things and made decisions for yourself as opposed to being spoon fed something and just took in that as truth. And that to me is what a real adult does. Like you don't just sit there and just be like, well, this, it says here that I have to do this and this and this and cross my T's and dot my I's and you know, that's the end of it. But you know, that's, everyone's walk is different. You can be yeah. 90 years old and not know anything and be, you know, six years old and be the most wise person in the world. So, right. Right. It depends. Absolutely. Yeah. So, um, so let's, now that we've talked about the saddest parts of your life, let's talk about something fun. <laughs> um, <laughs> I really want to talk about, cause so I sent out a form to everyone, which is that survey and you did it a while ago. So hopefully you'll remember. So you wrote a crazy, but true fact about yourself. And you okay. talked about how on your third birthday, a bee crawled into your ear and stung you while you're blowing your candles out. Can yeah. you paint us a picture as one, why did you not hear it going into your ear? Two, yeah. why did it sting you? And three, how long was it in your ear for it to crawl into your ear? Because three-year-old ears are small. Yeah. So, yeah. Oh, and I got tiny ears. So this motherfucker was <laughs> determined. Um, yeah, I got, I got, I got Frodo ears and, and, and Frodo feet. You know, it is, it is what it is. Uh, well, I have been stung by bees probably more than the average person should ever be stung in their life um oh my god yes i mean i've i've aggravated when my when my friend and i were little we were like six or five or six we were with his older brother and they thought it was funny to like kick an underground hornet's nest and then of course oh. they're bigger and faster so they just printed away and me and my buddy carrie we got just obliterated like the top of his head game over my face my body i mean it was just oh messed my up so gosh. that time alone was pretty rough and i've been stung on all fingers on this hand um i've been stung on my arm back front i've stepped on a bee and been stung uh, i've been stung on my thigh i've been stung um god uh what was the, the oh, well the ear so the way okay let me paint this picture so i'm, I'm it's my third birthday you know we're at, we lived on a military base at the time my family did and uh, I just remember it being very bright and very warm. We lived in Spokane at the time, and uh, uh, or singing "Happy Birthday," and I'm about to blow out the candle, and I hear zoom, and I think, and I immediately think like, "Oh, B!" But before I can go, "Oh, B!" Let's do something about it. The B was like, "Whoa, where am I? Stink!" <laughs> and just got out, like just dip. It was like stink, gone. And so then it goes, happy birthday. Ah, just a, the most violent intermission ever. Oh so my that's my, God. um, that's my ridiculous beast. That is traumatic. Um, so I assume that your ear kind of swole up and closed down. Well, at three o'clock or three o'clock, three years old, you don't know, but I don't, yeah, I don't remember, but I just remember fucking hurting very bad. When I was five, we had a, um, a Doberman pincher out. We, we live in Texas, and so they have fire ants everywhere. Ooh, yeah. I was five years old. We had this Doberman pincher. It was outside in the chain link fence, and so I walked out there alone. And I was like, and fun enough, the dog's name was Devil. Um, so I <laughs> went and, and talked to Devil, and um, I stood in, like, it, I was like knee deep in a fire ant hill, but I thought it was just dirt. And these bugs crawled all up my leg. I mean, I'm talking like all the way up to like my mid torso. And they didn't, they don't, fire ants don't bite like, like from the beginning to the top. They, it's kind of like they all know at once and then they start biting you. So like they got all the way up to like my mid torso crawling all over me. Um, I started running. I remember I was running back to my, my mother, to the, the back porch and my mother starts throwing all my clothes off and I had bites from like, my whole leg was like double the size of the other leg. And at five years old, you know, it's like, you think that, you know, you just can't walk. So I didn't walk for like three days, but it's fine. I got over it. My mom thought I was going to die, but I made it. So 
life is good, but like now I just I don't go outside. Like that was the last. That was oh the last my time. gosh. It, it was so traumatic. Like they crawled all the way up. And I remember at five years old, I remember the whole thing. Because so I just kept feeling warm. And I've kept feeling like, oh, it's like something's like on me, but like I thought it was the grass, but it wasn't. So yeah. that is um my fucking nightmare. So <laughs> no thank you. I don't fuck with ants. Like those guys, we learned in like first grade that they can lift ten times their body weight. So like when they all yeah. get you teach a first grader that. They don't look at ants the same way. They just look at them as like little meta humans that are just crawling around and being all badass and shit. And then there was the Magic School Bus episode where they meet ants and the ants just like fuck everything up. And you're like, don't. Why is everybody so chill about ants? Why is nobody talking about ants? They could rule the world if they wanted to. <laughs> if they wanted to, but they choose not to. They choose peace instead of violence every morning. So, wow. Crazy how ants um, okay. Are. So, I. <laughs> is there anything that you wanted to talk about more that I haven't brought up at all? Any questions you have for me? Yeah, like, how, I, you said a little bit that you started this, be I actually don't remember, like, how did you start this? This is fantastic. You're such an excellent uh, interviewer, question asker, and I'm enjoying it so much. It feels like time is flying. So w when did you start doing this? Well, stuff on a few must ask. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so I was born into, uh, my father's African American, my mother's Korean American. And um, I grew up very ostracized in life. And I had family on one side that didn't like me because I was the other one and the other side didn't like me because it, it, long story short, I was very much by myself and I grew up, um, mostly white neighborhoods. We moved around a lot. And of course I was the weird one. No one could put me in a stereotype of, of a whole of what I was. Um, so I was very much alone. Long story short, I grew up and observed that regardless of, you know, whether you are white, black, pink, purple, homosexual, heterosexual, pansexual, it doesn't matter. At the end of the day, we all have to eat, we all have to take a shit, and it's usually the same. <laughs> it usually looks the same. Yeah. Um, and so I grew up thinking, you know, I want to dictate my life and, and the stuff that I create, the content that I create, the art that I create, to bring people together, regardless of, of their differences. And so um, I went to film school for... Um, for my MFA in film and I started making movies and figured out before I ended up owing so much money to Columbia university. Um, yeah, you need money to make movies. Don't know if anyone told you yeah. that. No, I've learned that as well. Yeah. So, <laughs> um, when you need to make movies, you need money to back it. If you don't, you're up shit Creek. So <laughs> I'm like, well, I'm going to create, uh, still want to do what I'm trying to do, which is connect people and, and try to get people to understand that like, just because someone is different from you doesn't mean that they are, um, a negative or just because one of the things it's like, one of the things I hate when people say is like, I don't see color. So that means that color's bad. So, um, but people don't want to talk about it. They're like, no, it's just that, you know, you're like me, but just like you got a little color and I don't want to see that. So, um, <laughs> yeah. I created Human Coffee because I really feel like we need to talk about things that people are going through as humans um, mm -hmm. because we all go through trauma. We also all go through amazing things in life that we don't talk about. And because social media and, and the media and all that kind of stuff always harps on the negative, um, it's our job as humans who have the power and the ability to do so to create the positive. And so... Human coffee for me is is to see the good and bad and traumatic and wonderful things of a human being, um, and I think that that that's why I want to talk to people because I feel like one of number one I think TikTok is full of amazing human beings. Like yeah, there's some trash people obviously everywhere oh, yeah. you go there's trash. Yeah. But there's also like amazing people who are, you know, beautiful artists and spirits and, you know, just willing to step out of their comfort zone to talk about themselves and talk about what they're they're passionate about. And so I'm hoping um, to be able to to connect with a lot of people that will willing to be as intimate as you have been with me today and talk about the things that have changed them and motivated them and, you know, embracing them to to move forward, but also that have stopped them in their tracks and been like, look need to need to change some shit like you gotta yeah. we gotta stop so yeah um you know that's that to me is what what's important because at the end of the day like you know we're all gonna be dust one day um right. you might as well do what you can with what you got now so yeah um, so that's what i think is is most important and so that's why i did did this whole podcast and and i found out that like tiktok is like a godsend just because i'm able to connect with i i mean i live in georgia right now like there's no way i would have ran into you 
like ever. <laughs> and so crazy. like I'm just like it's just like there's a certain type of person that lives in Georgia that it's just like I just I'm I'm living here because of my family's here, my parents are here, but it's just not I don't I hate it. I hate it so much. Well, like, plenty plenty of space in California. There's not, but you're more than welcome. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> I'm lying, but come on. <laughs> I'm lying. There's plenty of space. Asterisk, come to California. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> So, um, so yeah, but you know, I, I do enjoy the time and I appreciate you coming on. Um, there's one more thing I wanted to ask you. So before what I've been trying to figure out is how I can make this a little more interesting for people that are coming on as well as for, for people who are listening, um, and watching hopefully. Um, and so what I did last time when I spoke with uh, my previous guests, we just did like a rapid fire of questions like dog or cat or pie or cake or whatever it's stupid so oh, yeah. what i wanted to do is um a game a 10 word sentence that we have to go back and forth so like i'll start with a word or you'll start with a word and we'll finish it in 10 sen- 10 words oh, okay so um, it can be anything it can just be you know just to to finish it and then hopefully after that i'll let you because we're now we've been talking for an hour and seven minutes it feels like i've just been talking to you for 10 minutes yeah. but uh, you know so do you want to start or do you do you want me to start yeah, you start. That's, <laughs> okay. Are you gonna okay. quit? Are you gonna keep track, or do I have to keep track? No, I'll. I, this is the first time I'm doing it. I'm gonna try to keep track. Um, <laughs> right. Make it to the fifth word. Be like, what did we say? Yeah. Exactly. Um, okay. So, I'll start. Okay. So, a cat is fat, <laughs> but fat. <laughs> <laughs> a cat is fat but that never tracks <laughs> why are they it doesn't have to rhyme why are you... i can't why? stop that guy can't stop <laughs> okay so a cat is fat but that it never tracks is that what you said cat is fat but that Never, never tracks. tracks if oh man you got the last word <laughs> i'm sorry and i know you're a writer i'm so sorry <laughs> let's think wait let's say it again the cat is a cat is fat but it never tracks if in the last word If you make it rhyme, you are the god among men. There's no way. Cat is fat. Entrap. Oh my god. Entrap. Oh my god. That's amazing. <laughs> Take that, Dr. Seuss. Take that. <laughs> wow. That's going to be probably the title of this episode. <laughs> it's going to make no sense. I hope so. <laughs> well, Stefan, thank you so much for being on here. Um, I hope, you know, down the road we'll be able to to chat again. I'm sure at a million followers you'll be hearing me hearing from me again. You are you get you get dibs. Anytime that there's a milestone, just please reach out. Don't hesitate. I will happily do this again. Oh, thank you. Thank you. So oh, there's a couple of things which have nothing to do with podcasts. One, congratulations on your your engagement. Thank I you. stalked you and, and saw the thing and so Good luck. Have fun. Um, two, um, good luck on your book. Let me know when it comes out. I'd love to. I'd love to get it. Um, when, so, for that, t- we're about to hang up. But I, just, I still want to know. Like for books, is it like a year process, or is it like okay, great, Stefan, this is great. Now we're gonna print it next week, or? I have no idea. Uh, okay. Well, from, what, from what I understand is what I'm doing right now is I'm putting together a book proposal in hopes that a publisher will go, yeah, we want to make this book, go finish it. So I haven't I haven't finished it. I have the outline and I have what is going to be in it. And I have a couple sample chapters, uh, but I don't have the book until somebody says, we will pay you to write the book. Oh, I see. I'm not, I don't. And I would have never, I would have, well, I would have never known that uh, if the book agent had told me that, so. Okay. Well, I, that, I don't envy you at all because that sounds horrifying to me so um, fun yeah it sounds not fun at all um all right well i'm gonna put all of your information down on the the show notes for so you're on tiktok you're on insta and do you want me to put the you now information on there is that something no. that you're 
No, because no, because honestly, it was really good to hear you say how confusing it was to figure <laughs> out what it was. Because that's my biggest that's my biggest issue is I'm like I don't even fucking understand how to get here. And that site gave my computer a bug like once or twice. So that's I'm not. Oh my God. I'm not trying to hang out there. So I just fucked up a brand for you. That's great. Um, <laughs> so, <laughs> so are you on Twitter? Yes, I am. Okay. Uh, af- what is your, because I couldn't find it. What is your just, Twitter at? I mostly is it just the say, same as TikTok? It, it might be. I mostly just say good morning to Lynn Manuel Miranda whenever I can. And hope that one day oh, he'll remember. So- and one day he'll just be like, I wonder who this guy is. And then he'll go to his Twitter feed and be like, he's been stalking me for seven years. <laughs> And then he'll be, and then he'll be concerned, but then he'll be ex- excited. Excited, and then you'll want to be best friends. And they want to be. You get it. You get yeah. it. You get it. Mm-hmm. Um, it is at Stefan. My my name underscore VDK. VDK. Okay, so I'll put that also in the show notes as well. And is there anything else you would like to tell your listeners? Because I know a lot of people who are following on TikTok and and your other social media sites are going to be listening. Um, I would say if anybody else like is trying to do what you're trying to do. I'm not a scary guy. Just reach out to me via <laughs> email. Not, guys, not. I'm, not, I'm not a scary guy. Just reach out to me via email. We'll, we'll make it happen. I love this because I get to, I get to like actually interact with you, which is so fun. And, and you have such great questions and it's thank been really you. fun. I appreciate this. I know. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Like, I feel like I made another friend and I don't even, I just, I, okay. This is the last time I'm saying I'm going to hang up. So like, I love TikTok. I'm on TikTok like more than I should say publicly <laughs> um, but i literally go onto the you know the side that the, the it's for everyone that you follow and it's like i'm checking on family like i'm like I wonder what stefan said today so i'm like scrolling <laughs> here, like, oh, man, just talking about his puppy dog day all right so i'll go like it's bad so, <laughs> so it's no. like, I, it's... i'm gonna start being like this one's for rebecca <laughs> <laughs> i'll be like yay like I put my comment on the top. It's bad. I have a problem. I know. Um, but all in all, thank you so much for being on here. And um, you know, I, I do definitely want to bring you on again. Hopefully, at a million followers, when you have like ten books and have your own production company and are making movies. And I can pay for you to make movies. Is what it sounds like. We're just be making movies together, left and right, just movies, movies, yes. movies, movies. And then we'll start flying women from Arkansas to to California. California. Yep. Yeah. I, I, just, I honestly, I see no flaws in this plan whatsoever. <laughs> yeah. 